بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعد Today we are going into the life of one of the highest of the messengers of Allah سبحانه وتعالى after Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم He was born in Iraq He was born in Babylon This is the messenger the great messenger Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, Abraham, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. He was a full nation by himself. Ibrahim was a nation by himself. One team, one man team, alayhi salatu wasalam. He is such a great man, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested him. Not once, not twice, but again and again. And he passed every single test. Allah says, Allah has taken Ibrahim as a very close friend. He became a friend of Allah because no matter what Allah said, even if it did not make sense to him, he surrendered to it because he knew where it came from. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had accepted the dua of Ibrahim Oh Allah, give me and make me a good remembrance on the ton of people after me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made Ibrahim alayhi salam to be accepted by everyone. Ibrahim is accepted by everyone. Look at the Christians, they accept Ibrahim. And they look up to Ibrahim as a prophet. The Jews respect Ibrahim and look up to him as a prophet. And no doubt about us, the Muslims, except Ibrahim and look up to him. Now Prophet has the status of Ibrahim among all the different beliefs or different faith, regardless to uh, its authenticity or not. They all respect Ibrahim alayhi salam. So what happened? At that time, the people were worshipping idols. And he was born as he grew up. He's seen his father. His father, the Quran says his name was Azar. So we will use that particular name. Azar, the father of Abraham. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of how Azar used to make idols and sell them. So the young boy, he was watching his father carving idols out of wood and stone. And then he would see his father selling them. Then he would notice people prostrate to these things that his own father was carving. So he was shocked. And when Ibrahim السلام, became a kid and his father now relying on his son to work with him, he used to use Ibrahim to sell those idols to people. SubhanAllah, it was a big test on Ibrahim السلام. And when Ibrahim, he will see his father manufacturing and making these idols who give it to Ibrahim and send off Ibrahim out to people to sell those idols. It's been narrated that he used to go past the river and he used to drown the idols, put them in the river and say, save yourself. Save yourself. Swim, You're drowning, do something. You can't even save yourself, how are you going to save me? You can't, even, you can't even take care of yourself, how are you going to take care of me? From that young age, Ibrahim rejected the concept of worshipping idols. And when he grew up, and he was old enough to speak out, but still young, Ibrahim spoke against those idols. Some narrations say his age was only seven. He started questioning, age of seven. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of this young boy. Allah says, وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا إِبْرَاهِيمَ رُشْدَهُ مِنْ قَبْلُ وَكُنَّا بِهِ عَالِمِينَ إِذْ قَالَ لِأَبِيهِ وَقَوْمِهِ مَا هَذِهِ التَّمَاثِيلُ الَّتِي أَنْتُمْ لَهَا عَاكِفُونَ And indeed we had given Ibrahim a long time ago guidance from a very early age well in advance and we knew very well Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all-knowing Allah says remember when Ibrahim asked his father 
and his nation, his people, meaning his father's people. What is this that you are worshipping? قَالُوا نَعْبُدُ أَصْنَامًا فَنَظَلُّ لَهَا عَاكِفِينَ In another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, They said, we are worshipping idols, and we will continue worshipping these idols. So he asks them a question. قَالَ هَلْ يَسْمَعُونَكُمْ إِذْ تَدْعُونَ Do they hear you when you're calling out to them? أَوْ يَنْفَعُونَكُمْ أَوْ يَضُرُّونَ Can they benefit you in any way or can they harm you in any way? What did they say? قَالُوا وَجَدْنَا آبَاءَنَا لَهَا عَابِدِينَ They said, we found our forefathers worshipping them. That was the answer. So, listen very carefully. They did not say yes, they did not say no. They just said when he asked them, do they hear you when you call? Or can they help you? Can they harm you? Can they benefit you? They said, look, we found our forefathers doing this. And in another verse, they said, we found our forefathers exactly worshipping these idols, so we will continue worshipping the idols. So Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam makes mention of even more questions. He says, قَالَ أَفَرَأَيْتُمْ مَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْبُدُونَ أَنْتُمْ وَآبَاؤُكُمُ الْأَقْدَمُونَ فَإِنَّهُمْ عَدُوٌ لِي إِلَّا رَبَّ الْعَالَمِينَ You see, these things that you people are worshipping, you and your forefathers that you have been worshipping all along, all of these things that you've been worshipping for so many years, they are all, including yourselves, enemies of mine. There is only one that I worship and that is رَبُّ الْعَالَمِينَ the Lord of all the worlds, the creator, whoever made everything here, that is whom I worship. So from a very young age, he understood that I cannot worship a stone or a stick or a piece of wood or anything. I need to only worship whoever made me. That's it. Some narrations say his age was only seven. He started questioning, age of seven. And after that, he grew up to a young boy and so on. And he started questioning, look, my father, what are you doing? One beautiful verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ إِنَّهُ كَانَ صِدِّيقًا نَبِيًّا And remember in the book, the Prophet Abraham, may peace be upon him, he was indeed a very truthful prophet. إِذْ قَالَ لِأَبِيَّا أَبَتِ لِمَا تَعْبُدُ مَا لَا يَسْمَعُ وَلَا يُبْصِرُ وَلَا يُغْنِي عَنْكَ شَيْئًا When he told his father, Oh my father, how can you worship something that cannot hear you, it cannot see you, and it cannot help you in anything? It won't be able to do a single thing for you. يَا أَبَتِ إِنِّي قَدْ جَاءَنِي مِنَ الْعِلْمِ مَا لَمْ يَأْتِكَ فَاتَّبِعْنِي أَهْدِكَ صِرَاطًا سَوِيًّا Oh my father, knowledge has come to me that did not come to you. So follow me, I will show you the right path. I'll show you the guidance. And he's a young boy saying this. The father also said, look, don't question. Don't want any questions. We've been following our forefathers. And the biggest problem is I'm making money out of this. How can you tell me to stop it? Come on. How can you worship something you're making with your own hands? Come on. Come on. And the father says, no, keep quiet. And the people said, no, keep quiet. Allahu Akbar. So Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam continues. He says, يا أبت لا تعبد الشيطان. Oh my father, don't worship the devil. إن الشيطان كان للرحمن عصيا. Indeed, the devil was very, very far from the obedience of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. The devil transgressed against the command of Allah of the Most Merciful. يا أبت إن 
أخاف أن يمسك عذاب من الرحمن فتكون للشيطان وليا Oh my father, I have a very big fear for you that the most merciful might punish you. Now, he started talking about these idols to the people and questioning everyone. They did not have answers. The only answer they had, one thing, we have found our forefathers doing this. That's it. So Ibrahim alayhi salam says, وَتَاللَّهِ لَأَكِيدَنَّ أَصْنَامَكُمْ بَعْدَ أَن تُوَلُّوا مُدْبِرِينَ He says to himself, Wallahi, I am going to destroy these idols. I'm going to plan and plot against them. Once these people are gone, I will plot against the idols. They used to have this festival, a holy festival that they all come out of the city and go out to the open, go out to the desert and worship the idols there. Maybe introduce new idols, maybe come up with new beliefs and it was a must on everyone to come out and participate in that festival so everyone used to come out when they told him let's go we want to go and pray he says Inni saqeem. I am sick he says what I am sick now he was not physically ill but what he meant is I am sick of what you people are doing I am not coming with you so he just said, I'm sick. He didn't finish the sentence, obviously. He says, I'm sick and I'm not coming with you. So they went away. When they all went, he looks at all these idols and he says, yes, talk to me. Talk to me. So naturally, there was no answer. That is by nature. It's a, it's a stone. It's a stick. So he says, What's wrong with you? You're not talking to me. He gave them a chance to talk. He started hitting them and destroying them one by one. And he's asking them questions as he's destroying them. What are you going to do? Can you help yourself? You can't help yourself. You can't help anyone else. Here you are. One gone, two gone, three gone. The whole lot of them gone. And left the main one, the head of all the idols as they believe left it untouched and what did he do he put the axe in front of it so when they came from a happy festival everyone smiling happy everyone is pleased and then they come into their city and they were shocked to see the idols being destroyed and demolished what happened to our lord being destroyed so they start to ask around who committed such an evil crime you had the guts. You had the guts. You had the encouragement to do such a bad crime like this. Our old has been destroyed. Our old has been demolished. Who has? Who, who, who dares to do something like that? Who did this to our gods? Indeed, he is very, very wrong he's from amongst the oppressors some one of them said there is no one else except that young man that we used to always hear him speak bad about our idols it's ibrahim that fata that young man that we all experienced him speaking bad about our idols. And you know what? We didn't even see him in the festival. So no one else except him. So they said, yeah, let's bring him for questioning. So they brought Ibrahim alayhi salam in front of Ifran. They said, oh Ibrahim, who did this to our gods? So he looked at them. He looks at the gods. And he says, this big one here you ask him maybe he might know what happened see does he talk he's not touched so i think he's still alive go and ask him and he's got the facts uh, he's got the axe in his hands he probably the one that did it 
Savron said, Oh Ibrahim, Oh Ibrahim, what are you saying? Are you making fun of us? You know that they don't speak, and you know that they don't hear, and you know that, you know that they don't listen. So Ibrahim said, I'm making fun of you, or you're making fun of yourself. He just said, they don't hear, they don't listen, they don't see, they don't respond. Then what do you worship them for? Subhanallah, he wanted to make this point. He wanted to make this point. Go and ask them. Maybe they could respond back to you. So they said, oh Ibrahim, you're making fun of us. You know they can't respond. You know they can't respond. And then they said, you are from the Dhalimin, you are from the oppressors. So I said, I am from the oppressors. Or oh, you are the one who oppresses yourself by worshipping such idols, such lords. They don't even speak. They don't even hear. They don't even see. They went back to themselves. I said, you know what? Deep inside, they were saying to themselves, this young man is really making a very good point. It's true. If these are all lords, they could have protected themselves. I wouldn't let someone to come and attack me. I'll protect myself. How about my lord can't even protect itself? Then they turned around because of pride. They turned against their logical sense, their common sense. They turned against what they really think of. Deep inside they know. This young man is really making a good point and it's true. But the pride, I'm not going to listen to a young man. They decided we need to punish him. They had their meetings, they arrested him, they chained him up and they said, you know what? Burn him to death to set an example so nobody must do this again. No one. And Ibrahim alayhi salam is one alone. But his belief in his maker was solid. So his father tells him, you better keep quiet my son. His father told him at one stage, oh my son, if you do not keep quiet, and if you do not stop asking all these silly questions, I will stone you to death personally. Imagine his father, his own father, wants to kill him, wants to stone him to death. And now the community is saying, burn him. So what did they do? They decided, yes, we must. And the punishment of Ibrahim is to let out a fire, a severe fire that no one had experienced on earth and to cast Ibrahim in that fire. Let him feel the pain of the fire in return of what he done to our idols. So they decided to get together and turn on and let on a fire that no one had experienced before. Everyone contributed into this fire. Everyone bring timber as a retaliation for the Lord. This man destroyed our Lord. We're going to retaliate. So everyone participated into bringing timber and bringing leaves and fire and turning on the fire until that fire became so severe that some narration says that birds could not even fly from above it. It was too hot, even reached to the skies. Meanwhile, Ibrahim is locked. He's not allowed to go anywhere for him to be casted in that fire. And then the time of the punishment of Ibrahim came. And it became a massive fire. And that fire was so hot. That fire was so hot that they couldn't get near it. So what did they do? They pulled Ibrahim alayhi salam on a trunk of a palm tree and pull the tree to the maximum they can and put Ibrahim alayhi salam on that tree, on that palm tree and then they let her off and Ibrahim was thrown into the fire when Ibrahim alayhi salam was flying into the fire Jibreel will come to Ibrahim and say oh Ibrahim do you need any help? so Ibrahim says to him from you no, but from Allah, yes. This is the heart of Ibrahim alayhi salam. So attached with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even in a moment that you even ask help from anyone and anything, 
Jibreel will come to him and say to Ibrahim in that moment that Ibrahim has no one except Allah who say to him, Oh Ibrahim, do you need help? He says, from you, no, but from Allah, yes. As he was being thrown, he made a dua. حَسْبُونَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ Enough. Allah is enough for me. And he is the best disposer of affairs. So as he was released, there were stairs created. So he was literally coming down in such a beautiful way into the fire. And these people are looking at him. And as he went in, Allah says, Qulna. Ya naru kuni bardan wa salaman ala Ibrahim We said, O oh fire, become cold and be a means of peace to Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam So immediately, if someone is tied up with, with chains and ropes for the fire to be a means of peace it had to burn the ropes and chains so now he was released. Subhanallah, he was released. And then he walks out of that fire very calmly. As he walks out, they are just shocked looking at him. They don't know. Such a scene they have never ever seen before. So they walk away from Ibrahim. They weren't there to do anything to Ibrahim. Who dares to do something to this person? Who dares to do something to this person? He was thrown in the fire that was enough to burn a nation. And he came out from it safely. So what would someone dare to do after that? So no one dared to do anything to Ibrahim. So one young man gets up and he decides, I want to follow you. You are right. These people are wrong. Allahu Akbar. Young man. Who was this young man? His nephew. Lut alayhi salatu was salam. The Prophet Lut, he was not yet a prophet. He was a young, young boy. The nephew of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. He came up and he's seen everything and he'd watched it and he decided, I surrender to whoever made me as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they decided we now need to leave because these people are making our life difficult and they need to go. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَآمَنَ لَهُ لُوطُ وَقَالَ إِنِّي مُهَاجِرٌ إِلَىٰ رَبِّي Lut accepted his message and believed in what he brought. And he said, I am, I am making hijrah for the sake of Allah. I cannot worship Allah here with these people around. We've tried everything. They've seen the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now I need to go elsewhere so that I can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala correctly. And the two of them decided to leave the place. At that moment, there was a ruler, a tyrant ruler, a tyrant king. His name is Namrud. So Namrud heard about Ibrahim and heard how Ibrahim alayhi salam rebels. So he called him. He ordered the soldiers to bring him. So they brought Ibrahim alayhi salam forward. And Ibrahim alayhi salam stood in front of Namrud. أَلَمْ تَرَ إِلَى الَّذِي حَاجَّ إِبْرَاهِيمَ فِي رَبِّهِ أَنْ آتَاهُ اللَّهُ الْمُلْكِ Do you see the one who decided to argue and debate with Ibrahim regarding Ibrahim's Rabb, regarding the one whom Ibrahim was worshipping, just because Allah had given him kingdom and Allah gave him authority. إِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّيَ الَّذِي يُحْيِي وَيُمِيتُ قَالَ أَنَا أُحْيِي وَأُمِيتُ There were people who used to worship this king. He used to call himself a god. So the king says, Who is the one you worship, O Ibrahim? So Ibrahim says, I worship the one who gives life and takes that life. He gives death. So this king thought he's talking to a youngster who doesn't have a mind or a brain good enough. So he says, well, I give life and I also cause death. And what did he do? The historians make mention of the fact that he brought in two prisoners who were meant to die, which means who were sentenced to death. And he said, look, I'm giving life, free him. And he was free. And look, I've given death, kill that one. He was killed. So Ibrahim alayhi salam looks and decides, you know what? 
There's no point in arguing with a fool. In that way, he's not going to understand it. So the best way is to ignore that. Now let me attack him on another line. Something he will not be able to talk about. He says, okay. Ibrahim alayhi salam looks at him and says, okay. قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْتِي بِالشَّمْسِ مِنَ الْمَشْرِقُ فَأْتِ بِهَا مِنَ الْمَغْرِبُ Simple question. Ibrahim says, okay. I worship the one, Allah, who causes the sun to rise from the east. I want you to cause it to rise from the west. Then I will worship him. He was defeated completely. He was a disbeliever. He had no answer, no response. He couldn't say anything. What is he going to say? So Namrud, he heard about Ibrahim alayhi salam. He was thrown in a very, very hot and boiling and melting fire and he came out from it normal. He came out from it safely. So he didn't bother someone like Namrud. Someone in his position usually kills people that even speak back to him. But he was scared from Ibrahim. He heard about him. And I said, what am I going to do? If this person was thrown in the fire and he came out safely, I can't do anything to him. So he left him. He said, get out of my city. Get out of this whole town. Get out of this whole country. At some stage, there was a female who accepted his message, his own wife, Sarah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's peace be upon the two of them. Ibrahim alayhi salam will then leave Iraq. And he'll migrate from Iraq to Sham. Sham today is made up of a few countries. Palestine, Syria, Lebanon, and Jordan. Those areas put together, that entire region is called a Sham. So as Ibrahim alayhi salatu was was going there, he stopped at a certain place called Harran. And Harran, he thought, let me stop here and I will call these people towards Allah. Because only two people have accepted this message. And then he got to Harran and he found that there, they were worshipping the stars. He found people, they did not worship stones and sticks. They worship the stars. And then Ibrahim alayhi salam decided, you know, I need to speak to them properly. Firstly, we're only three. These people are a whole community. And I am here. Let me start talking to them in their language. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, as he was sitting with them, as the night came and the darkness fell, he saw a star and he said loudly, this is my Rabb. There is a chance, there is a possibility, this is my Rabb. They're all looking at him. They're like sort of happy. Hey, this is one of us. But he did not consider it, nor was he ever considering it. He was Qalbun Salim from the beginning. He had a pure heart from the beginning. Some people when they read these verses of the Quran, they translate them as though Ibrahim alayhi salam had a doubt and he was looking at the stars and thinking, should I worship this? Should I worship that? No, absolutely not. What happened was in Harran, Ibrahim alayhi salam decided to use it as a method of explaining to them step by step to get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when that planet that was appears as a star, as it set and it stopped appearing, he looked and he says, where's that star that I was worshipping just now moments ago? When it set, he quickly said, I don't like those things that set. Because if they set, what am I going to do? It's weak. This Now if I've got a problem right now, what do I do? I've got to wait for it to come back the following night in order to call out to it. So they were looking at him. They were slightly convincing themselves that yes, this man is speaking sense. And now what happened? He said, look, I found something bigger than that. What was it? He saw the moon big. And he says, okay, this is much bigger than that one we had just now. I think this might be a Rabb. This might be my Rabb. So they're looking, they're happy also. Yes, he's contemplating, considering. When it set, he said, if my maker, look at how he's going back to the word maker. If my maker 
does not guide me, my Lord does not guide me, then I will be from amongst those who are astray. Because I cannot worship this, it is now gone. And suddenly, at sunrise, the sun appeared. When the sun appeared, it was shining. Now, these people used to worship stars, not the sun. But look, Ibrahim is showing them there's something bigger than the stars, the moon. The moon also goes, there's something bigger than the moon, the sun. He says, he looked at the sun and he says, Okay, this thing has now risen. It is the biggest from all of those. I think this must be the Rabb. It is more deserving of being a Rabb than those two things that just went by. Now when it set, what was left? There's nothing left now. The stars, gone. The moon, gone gone the sun gone when the sun sets what if you have a problem at night now who do you call out to you got to wait 12 hours for that thing to come back up before you can say hey i got a problem so what did he say he said, Oh my people, I am free. I disassociate myself completely from that which you are associating as partners with the one who made the skies, the earth, the stars, the moon, the sun, myself and yourselves. Whoever made me, you and all these creatures in existence, whoever he is, I owe my entire worship solely and only to him. And I will never, ever associate a speck of partnership with that maker of mine. So immediately they started arguing with him. These people started debating with him and there was a give and take speech. They are saying things, he is responding. They are saying things, he is responding. Then he said, How can you debate with me about my own maker, about my creator, about Allah? And he has guided me. He has given me guidance. I know that what I am doing is definitely correct. I do not have a speck of doubt. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about this debate. And after that, he says, I do not fear anything that you are associating as partners with Allah. They can do nothing to me unless my own creator wills that something bad happen to me or anything happens to me. They cannot harm me. They cannot benefit me. I don't fear them at all. The only thing I fear, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my maker, wants something, it can happen. If he doesn't want it, it won't happen. Then he, he tells them, he asks them a question. How can I fear those things that you are associating as partners with Allah when you are not fearing the fact that you have associated partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're not fearing Allah and the fact that you've associated partners with Him and you want me to fear those partners that you have taken as partners with the Maker, with the Creator. Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. How? So He says, look out of us, the two parties, who is more deserving of peace and comfort and contentment and protection? Those who have believed and they have not contaminated their Iman with any association of partnership with Allah. They are more deserving of comfort, contentment, protection and they are the ones who are rightly guided. And then Allah says, 
وتلك حجتنا آتيناها إبراهيم على قومه That was the power of debate that we gave to Ibrahim over his people. Allah says we gave him the power of debating over his people. It was the sign. It was the evidence against his own people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given him. What a powerful statement. So after that, they started threatening him to kill him. Look at this. Once again, another person threatening to kill. So thereafter, he left Harran. He decided to go to the closer area of Sham. He went into Sham and after some time there was a drought there. And when there was a drought there, he decided, let me leave this place with my family. So he instructed Lut alayhi salam to head to a certain area. And that area, Lut alayhi salatu was salam settled in a place known as Sodom. Sodom. But Lut alayhi salam went and Ibrahim alayhi salam took his wife and started walking to in a certain direction. And he was heading for Egypt. When I arrived to Egypt, it turned out to be more corrupt than what he thought. In Egypt, there was a king. That king was so low and disgraceful. And he was a very bad king and tyrant king. And he was a womanizer. He was a womanizer. To the stage, my brothers and sisters, they had spies. Their job is to spy around, to look around for beautiful women. And if there's a beautiful woman, she must come to him whether she likes it or not, whether she's married or not. And when Ibrahim salam arrived with who? With Sarah, the second most beautiful woman existed on earth, he heard that king, his spies, sent the news to him. There's an outsider who came into town. He's got the most beautiful woman that ever came on earth. So he said, bring her to me. And ask that man that's with her, ask him if he's her husband, kill him. And if he's her brother or anyone beside her husband, let him alive. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Jibreel to Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ibrahim was informed of what the king is planning to. So Ibrahim told his wife Sarah, if they ask you, what's my relationship to you? Say, I am your brother. And what's your relationship to me? Say, you are my sister. By Allah, there is only me and you who say, La ilaha illallah. So we are brothers in Islam. That was his intention. You are my sister in Islam. I'm your brother in Islam. And no doubt, the soldiers of that tyrant king came and took Sarah. So he resorted to Allah Azza wa Jal and he prayed to Allah. And continued to pray to Allah Azza wa Jal. And they took Sarah to this king. And that king will see a beautiful woman in front of him that he hasn't seen before. They all got together and they started preparing her in the room and so on. And she was very, very sad, making dua to Allah. Ya Allah, save me. Ya Allah, I have protected myself. You have granted me this chastity, this protection. To this day, I have protected myself purely for my husband, Ya Allah. I have worshipped you alone. Ya Allah, grant me protection and savior. So as she was very sad, he walked in, he was very happy. And he closed the doors. When he looked at her very sad, because he wanted her so desperately, he also became a bit sad. And when he became a little bit sad, he sat down. And he's looking at her and he's offering her things and she was adorned in gold and silver and jewelry and what have you but she was sad she had forgotten about everything that was not interesting she was not interested in it at all and in the process this man fell off to sleep and when he fell off to sleep he'd seen in his dream he'd seen in his dream that this is what happened and he was he had to leave this woman untouched and release her back and let her go or he would see his own destruction. So when he got up from his sleep, he decided to give her a gift. And what was the gift? The gift was a girl. This girl, her name was Hajar. The gift was given to her and she was told you can go. And she went back to Ibrahim alayhi salam and they lived as husband and wife in Egypt for quite a long time. And mashallah, 
they had lots of barakah and blessings in their business. He had so much sheep and he had so much in terms of wealth and he became quite a wealthy person until they became jealous of him. They started becoming jealous of him. So he took all whatever his belongings were and he went back to Jerusalem. He went back to Asham and that is where he settled once again with his wife Sarah and he had this girl known as Hajar. But there was one thing missing in Ibrahim's life. 85 years old, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given him the good of his religion. And now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him also a beautiful wife. And alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had opened the gates of good on his hands. He's wealthy. But there's one more thing missing in his life. <coughs> Having a child. A human being is attached to have children. So Sarah saw and felt Ibrahim is loving to have a child. He's 85 years old. And the unfortunate thing is Ibrahim didn't have a child because Sarah, Sarah was barren. She doesn't give birth. So Sarah felt that it's time for her to give something back to Ibrahim. So she gave his slave, Hajar, a present to Ibrahim. He's Hajar, or Ibrahim, take her. She is yours now. Get married to her. Have children from her. May Allah bless you and her and us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willed that to happen. And Ibrahim alayhi salam took, accepted Hajar and then married her. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed Ibrahim alayhi salam with his first child, Ismail alayhi salam, when Ibrahim was 86 years old. Now Ibrahim, alhamdulillah, what more can he get? A prophet and a messenger got the best of this deen and Allah's given him dunya and has given him a beautiful wife and another wife and now the child, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. But now the tester. He was instructed after some time to take this wife of his and the child, meaning mother and child, and to move on the earth until he got to a certain place which was completely barren it had nothing on it. It was just soil and it was a very, very hot place. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes it. And that is the valley of Mecca. When he got to Mecca to Mukarramah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala issued another instruction. Allah was the test Ibrahim. Who comes first? Does Allah come first? Or does the child come first? And he's, if it's Allah, then prove it. Allah azza wa jal ordered Ibrahim alayhi salam to take Hajar and his new baby born Ismail. Could you imagine 86 years waiting for this child and the child comes? Now it's the big test. If you really love us, O Ibrahim, then sacrifice. And Ibrahim said, Sam'an wa ta'an wa Allah, we listen and obey. We'll sacrifice. Even if it's the most beloved thing in our life, my own son Ismail. And what's that test? Take Hajar and his son Ismail in the middle of a valley by the name of Mecca where there's nothing there and leave him alone and come back to Sarah. What a test. What a test, ya ikhwani. What a test, ya ikhwani. Just think about it. 86 years waiting for this child and the child comes and his heart is so attached to the child. Now, put him and his mother in a place not a town, not a city with the civilization, these you know, services, these people around in the middle of nowhere. So Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam decided to leave his wife and his child and they hardly had much to eat. It is reported just a day or two of food and drink and he started walking and his wife looks at him and she starts questioning him. Where are you going? What's happening? He didn't answer. He just carried on. Then she decided there's only one thing that can be happening here. It can only be an instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So she says, is it Allah who has instructed you to do this? That is when he said yes and he continued. At that moment, she also surrendered. And she decided not to question further. And she knew for a fact that Allah was going to look after them. Now as he left, he began to make dua. He was breastfed for a while and then the food ran out and everything dried up, subhanallah. And the mother is looking at the child 
and she says, no, I must make an effort to try and look for some food. So she decided to go up the hillock, the Mount Safa. She went up the mountain and she's looking. Is there any sign? No sign. No life. No movement. No nothing. So she came down, making dua to Allah. And when she gets to the bottom, she's running. Why is she running at the bottom? Because she wants to get to the top of the other mount on the other side. And she doesn't want to miss anyone who might pass while she's at the bottom. So she runs at a specific place and then she climbs up. She is in Marwa. She makes dua again for sustenance. Ya Allah, send us some goodness. Ya Allah, you are the one. We know you will not let us down. And a couple of times she ran up and down. And down and up. Allahu Akbar. Making dua, looking, checking. Then she heard a sound. And she's looking, what sound is this? And she came down and she looked at where the child was. And there was a spring of water gushing from nowhere. Subhanallah. A spring of water gushing from nowhere. She looked at it and she thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She sat down and she wanted to gather the water. So she created a basin like structure, small little basin like structure with her hands, with the muddy sand clay that now became like clay and mud because it was wet. And she began to say in the language Zam, 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 Zam. It means stop, stop, stop because we want to now take you and drink you. So you stop. To this day, we have this water known as Zam Zam from the same well. And for your information, it is gushing at this moment. It is gushing at this moment thousands of gallons per hour. And millions of people across the globe drink from it. After some time, the birds began to come. When the birds began to come and they were drinking from there in the middle of the desert, the middle of the desert, no life was there. And Caravans used to pass and you know in the heat of the moment they're looking for birds. Why are they looking for birds? Not to hunt the birds, but wherever you see a bird, you know there's some water nearby. So the clan of Jorhum was passing from that area and they noticed some birds in the middle of nowhere. They were not expecting them. So they decided to check up on what is happening and they sent someone. Go and see where these birds are flying to. So the birds had gone and they were sitting around this well and the water was gushing they were drinking and this messenger finds a woman with a little baby so he went back to his people the people of jorhum the caravan and he explained to them they were very very amazed they came they knew this is a miracle so they asked the woman do you mind if we live here why because there's water running from here it's gushing that doesn't happen in the in, the, in, in that particular desert it doesn't happen water gushing from underneath so when they asked her the question she looked at them and responded very very beautifully firstly look at how honest they were they were good people can we come and stay here because they understood it's a miracle so from that she realized these people have good character they are disciplined people they are cultured so she said look you can come and stay here on condition that this water belongs to us not to you we'll allow you to drink from it but it's our property not yours so you can drink and benefit so they, they stayed there. They were very happy and they loved the little child. They loved the child. And as the child grew, they taught him Arabic. They were pure Arabs. They taught him Arabic. They taught him manners and so on. And as he grew up, his father used to come and go. His father, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, when he came back at one stage, he'd seen, mashallah, this is the setup. And he was quite happy with it. And he used to come and he used to go. And then... The big test comes to Ibrahim alayhi salam. The great test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you could imagine Ibrahim alayhi salam for 86 years waiting for a child. You could imagine and picture how, how, how the heart of Ibrahim was so attached to his son Ismail. And then the sacrifice comes where Allah azza wa jal tells Ibrahim to move away Hajar and Ismail from him and Sarah. Now the bigger test comes when Ismail alayhi salam grows and he grows as a righteousness growing and Ismail alayhi salam 
becomes a young, fit teenager, righteous and pious, God-fearing, loving Islam and worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How beautiful is that for the father to see? You could imagine now the heart of Ibrahim is even more attached to his son Ismail when he sees his son, a young adult, fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, calling to Allah, worshipping Allah azza wa jal. And the big test comes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now orders Ibrahim a great order. Where Ibrahim alayhi salam, one night he will see himself slaughtering his own son Ismail. And now Ibrahim alayhi salam is in a great test. He's in a very, very tough position. Slaughter your son. Slaughter your son. Maybe we think about it. It's easy, but think about it happening to you. You realize it's very hard. Slaughter your own son. Could you imagine when you slaughter your own son? But what was the response of Ibrahim alayhi salam? He had no other option except saying sam'an wa ta'an. Oh Allah, we heard and we obey. Regardless to what you order me. If it's to slaughter my son, then your order must be implemented. And he related the dream to his son the following day. He took his son aside and he tells his son, Allahu Akbar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of this in the Quran. When his son was old enough and he used to walk with him and he used to travel with him and come back with him and so on, he told his son, he says, Oh my son, I have been instructed in a dream by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to sacrifice you. So what do you think I should do? Oh my father, do as Allah has commanded you. Do as Allah has commanded you. You will find me from amongst those who are patient. Immediately he surrendered. It did not take him a split second to think. He says, Oh my father, do as you've been instructed. You will find me from amongst the patients. Allahu Akbar. And Ibrahim will take his son. He goes and looks for a good place to slaughter his son away from his mother. At that moment, Iblis will come trying to turn Ibrahim away from what he saw. And he came up to Ibrahim and he told him, Oh Ibrahim, you're going to take his, you're going to go and slaughter your son. You just saw a dream. Maybe it was just a dream, a foolish dream. So Ibrahim grabbed stones and threw him, stoned him. Then he went to Ismail, tried to turn Ismail away from following his father. And Ismail also started to cast him with rocks and stones. And then he came to both of them. And three of them start to cast them with rocks and stones. And that's why when you go to Hajj, you throw those three different throwers. Reminding yourself when you attempt to do something for Allah, be firm and strong. And then they come to a big rock. Surah to put Ismail, to lay Ismail on it and to slaughter him. And subhanAllah, ikhwani, look what Ismail tells his father at that time. He tells him, Oh father, make my face towards the ground. So when you look at me, Make my face towards the ground. So in case, if you look at my face, and you see my face while you're slaughtering, you might get some sympathy. You walk away from Allah's order. So turn my face around. And sharpen your knife, so you could slaughter me quickly. And you continue with the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he turned Ibrahim, Ibrahim turned Ismail on his forehead towards the ground. فَلَمَّا أَسْلَمَا وَتَلَّهُ لِلْجَبِينَ Allah says the two of them surrendered to the instruction. Ibrahim alayhi salam grabs his son. His face is towards the ground. The knife is sharpened in his hand. He puts it on the neck of Ismail alayhi salam 
and he tries to slaughter and every time he tries to slaughter the knife will spin the other side and again he tries to slaughter and the knife will spin the other side because the knife will cut only by the will of Allah as the fire will only burn by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَفَدَيْنَاهُ بِذِبْحٍ عَظِيمٍ Firstly Allah says وَنَادَيْنَاهُ أَنْ يَا إِبْرَاهِيمٌ قَدْ صَدَّقْتَ الرُّؤِيَا Allahu Akbar We replaced him with a ram from paradise and Ibrahim alayhi salam slaughtered and sacrificed that ram from paradise and he looked and he'd seen this is a ram and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called out oh Ibrahim you are indeed truthful to us we have tested you and you have passed the test now you can ask what you want it's all yours Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar this was the ultimate test and the, the, the passing of the test was not only for the father but even for the child now there are people of the previous scriptures who say that the sacrifice was Ishaq or Isaac and it was not Ismail. Ishaq was not even born at the time. He was not yet there at the time. And this happened in Makkah al Mukarramah. So there is no point to dispute that. Historically, it is proven through history that Ishaq alayhi salatu was salam was not there. Because after that, Allah says in the Quran, once Allah called out to him and told him, that we have replaced this with a sacrificial ram from Jannah. Then Allah says, and we gave him good news of another child known as Ishaq who will come to him. So this was another child. <laughs> Indeed, this is a very, very clear manifest test of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a clear test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, We have granted him good news of another child. And Allah says, Inna kathalika najzil muhsineen. This is how we recompense those who do good. So anyone who does good, they bear patience. They surrender to the command of Allah. At some point, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open their doors in a way that they would never ever have understood. And the days went past, and then another order comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Ibrahim alayhi salam to build a house as a symbol of the oneness of Allah Almighty. And Ibrahim alayhi salam will go to the valley of Mecca. And he'll see Ismail alayhi salam. And he'll say to Ismail, O oh son, Allah had ordered me an order. So Ismail will say, Oh Allah, or oh, oh, oh Dad, do what, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had ordered you to do. So Ibrahim told Ismail, And would you help me? So Ismail said, Yes, I will help you. They were making a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as they were doing this. What was the dua? Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta sami'ul alim Oh Allah, accept this from us. Oh Allah, we are putting up a house for you. So as they began to build it, it got a little bit high. When it was a little bit high, what happened? Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam was getting the bricks or the rocks from Ismail alayhi salam. There was no mortar used, no cement. It was just rock on rock on rock on rock. Each one was fitting into the other like a jigsaw. Similar to what we spoke about when Nuh built the ark, Noah, may peace be upon him. So what happened? As they're putting it up, now it's getting a bit high. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala miraculously caused a specific rock that he was standing on to go slightly higher. And he placed it. Then it would come slightly lower. He would get the, the, uh, the next one. Then it would go slightly higher. He would place it. Then it would come low. They knew that this is Allah. It is the house of Allah. He has shown us one too many times that definitely he's with us. That is the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when the house was built, there was a corner. Ibrahim alayhi salam thought to himself, I want to put a proper rock in this corner that fits flush in the corner. And he was trying to look for a, a rock and asking Ismail alayhi salam, let's put this rock. And Ismail alayhi salam is looking for something, but he couldn't find it. 
And later on, Ismail alayhi salam came back and he'd seen a beautiful rock there. He says, what's this? He says, Allah sent me a rock from Jannah. From paradise. This rock has come. And this is what we call today Al-Hajar Al-Aswad. It was white and it became black from the sins of people. And now it's black. And if you see it, it's a black rock. And it's not as big as it used to be. Throughout years, it reduced a few tips here and there, fell down and was stolen in some areas. So it's smaller than the original size. And suddenly the rock he was standing on, it softened for a moment, just for a moment. And his footprint was left on the rock. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about that footprint in the Quran. Where the footsteps of Ibrahim are. Literally, the physical footsteps. You need to fulfill salah for the sake of Allah at that point. Somewhere close there. If you look into the glass box, you will notice two feet. And that is the imprint of the feet of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. To this day, it is there. And now the Kaaba has been built. What's the next thing being built? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells Ibrahim, the Kaaba has been built. Now call people to come and visit the Kaaba. So Ibrahim looks around, who's there? Who's going to come? There's no one around. So he said, oh Allah, where is my voice going to reach to? I'll call and call who's going to hear me, two, three people. So Allah Azza wa Jal told Ibrahim, oh Ibrahim, you do your job and what you've been ordered to do and leave the rest on us. We do the rest. We give the results. So Ibrahim got up and he said, all people around the world, Allah had built a house of his and he orders you to come and perform pilgrimage. So come and perform pilgrimage. So Allah made the voice of Ibrahim reach everywhere. Till this day that he go and perform pilgrimage because of the call of Ibrahim. Call people for Az. You find people walking to this place, walking with their feet to this place, or coming with their camels, or coming with anything to this place. And from that day, millions and trillions of people go and perform Haz and visit the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we have a very interesting story where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of when Ibrahim alayhi salam went back to his wife Sarah, the other wife that he had had, and he was a very, very, very generous person, Ibrahim alayhi salam. So there came a time when some visitors visited him and he didn't know them. Three people came in, good looking people. When they came in, he asked his wife, do you know them? No, we don't. Okay. He looks at them and he wanted to serve them something. So he went back into the house and he asked his wife, is there anything to eat? She says, well, we've got a little bit of meat here. He says, no, let's slaughter a calf, a nice fat calf we find at the back there. He slaughtered it and he ordered his servants to cook it on the spit properly. And they brought the whole calf for how many people? Three people. There were just three of them. Look at how hospitable he was. He wanted to give these people food. So he brought this and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of this. وَلَقَدْ جَاءَتْ رُسُلُنَا إِبْرَاهِيمَ بِالْبُشْرَى قَالُوا سَلَامًا قَالَ سَلَامٌ فَمَا لَبِثَ أَنْ جَاءَ بِعِجْلٍ حَنِيذٍ When these people came, he greeted them with salam. They responded with the salam. In a short while, he came with a whole calf. He put it forward. فَلَمَّا رَآ أَيْدِيَهُمْ لَا تَصِلُ إِلَيْهِ نَكِرَهُمْ وَأَوْجَسَ مِنْهُمْ خِيفَةً قَالُوا لَا تَخَفْ When he saw these people are not eating. I came with a calf, it's cooked so well. It's a top meal, mashallah. I want to honor my guests, I don't even know them. And here they are, they're not eating. So he started eating a little bit in order to try and encourage them. But he'd seen these people are not eating and he began to tremble in a bit of fear. Not to say that I'm scared. You know, of these people doing something to me. But what's wrong with these people? Are, they, are these actually people? He sensed something amiss. Something was wrong. So immediately he told him, Hey, you know what? I'm starting to get a doubt. What, who are you here? You know, what's happening here? I've got this feeling within me. So they said, La takhaf. 
إنا أرسلنا إلى قوم لوط Don't fear Ibrahim We are not human beings We are angels Don't fear Ibrahim We are not human beings We are angels Allah sent us with two missions To come to you to give you some news And to go and destroy the people of Lut So his wife heard When she heard she started laughing وَامْرَأَتُهُ قَائِمَةٌ فَضَحِكَتْ His wife was standing, she heard the news and she laughed a little bit. Laughed in the sense that finally something is being done about the people of Lut. So Allah says when she laughed, they gave her news. They told her. Allah says, فَبَشَّرْنَاهَا بِإِسْحَاقَ وَمِنْ وَرَاءِ إِسْحَاقَ يَعْقُوبَ we gave her good news that you are expecting a child. Sarah, at that moment, she was 90 years old. And when she was young, she couldn't get children. Now when she's old, she's going to get children. She started to say, what? And she started to touch her face. I'm going to give birth and I'm an old woman. And my husband is even older than me. He's an old sheikh, he's an old man. How would this be possible? When I was young, I couldn't even get children. Now, 90 years old, and my husband, 120 years old, he's gonna, we're going to get children? So she said, this is amazing. Amazing. This is absolutely amazing. You are amazed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's matter? Well, there is another good news for you. What is it? Not only that you'll fall pregnant, and you'll get Ishaq, you will even live long enough until you see the son of Ishaq Yaqub. Then Ibrahim alayhi salam, once his fear was gone, he was more worried about Lut. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَمَّا ذَهَبَ عَنْ إِبْرَاهِيمَ الرَّوْعُ وَجَاءَتْهُ الْبُشْرَى يُجَادِلُنَا فِي قَوْمِ لُوتُ إِنَّ إِبْرَاهِيمَ لَحَلِيمٌ أَوَّاهٌ مُنِيبٌ We gave him good news when he, his fear was gone. He started debating with us about Lut and the people of Lut. Like he is saying, look, maybe they will still turn. Because remember, up to that point, he had not asked for anyone to be punished, Ibrahim alayhi salam. He hadn't ever asked for anyone to be punished as such or for a nation to be destroyed. He continued making dua for them. And that was also one of his characteristics. He continued praying for them. So he was debating. He was saying, look, but you are going to loot. Why don't you give them a bit of time? And you know what? There's a man in there. If you are going to destroy all of them, loot is from amongst them. Don't you know that? So they said, look. Ya Ibrahim, a'rid an hadha. إِنَّهُ قَدْ جَاءَ أَمْرُ رَبِّكْ وَإِنَّهُمْ آتِيهِمْ عَذَابٌ غَيْرُ مَرْدُودٌ O Ibrahim, let's not talk about that. You just turn away from that discussion because it is the instruction of Allah that they will be destroyed and that punishment will come and it is not going to be reversed. Done. So he was reassured that Lut would be saved. And he was reassured that the people who had believed would be saved. And then he had bidded farewell to these particular angels and they left in their own way. So who were the offspring? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, Ya Ibrahim, the gift we want to give you is two things will keep it in your family. Prophethood and revelation in your family. The books that will come down, your family. All of them and the messengers your family so Allah tells us in the Quran the names of some of these children of Ibrahim whom he had chosen do you want to hear these names so beautifully they are just written out Allahu Akbar Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says you heard two names isn't it subhanallah Allah says, we granted him a gift of Ishaq and Yaqub. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kullan hadayna wa nuhan hadayna min qablu. We guided them all. Just like we had guided Noah before them. So, Nuh alayhi salam was the father. 
Ibrahim alayhi salam was from the family of Nuh. And now we find Allah's made mention of two names. Ishaq and Yaqub. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمِن ذُرِّيَّتِهِ دَاوُودَ وَسُلَيْمَانَ وَأَيُّوبَ وَيُوسُفَ وَمُوسَى وَهَارُونَ Look at the names, one after the other. Moses, Aaron, so on, so on. Allahu Akbar, may Allah's peace be upon them. It doesn't stop there. Allah gives us a break so we can rest. Allahu Akbar, we can take a breath. Allah says, وَكَذَلِكَ نَجْزِ الْمُحْسِنِينَ That is how we re recompense those who do good. Which means we keep the deen in their progeny. And, the, and it, co it continues. وَزَكَرِيَّا وَيَحْيَا وَعِيسَى وَإِلْيَاسِ Another four names, Allah gives us a break. كُلُّمْ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ They were all pious. وَإِسْمَاعِيلَ وَالْيَسَعَ وَيُونُسَ وَلُوطَ Allahu Akbar. Look at all the names, one after the other. They're just being recited. Allah is telling Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, here you are, everything is set. When we instructed you, you surrendered without ever batting an eyelid. Now you look what will happen for you. This is a lesson for us. Allah tests you one, two, three, four. He tests you one after the other. Big, big tests. When you pass all those tests, Allah will fling open those doors in such a way that you won't even know. Allahu Akbar. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says after that, it's not stopped. The names might have stopped, but Allah says, وَمِنْ آبَائِهِمْ وَذُرِّيَّاتِهِمْ وَإِخْوَانِهِمْ وَاجْتَبَيْنَاهُمْ وَهَدَيْنَاهُمْ إِلَىٰ صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ from their parents, from their children, from their brethren. We guided them, we chose them, we showed them the right path. So not only those names, but all their families, a lot of them, Allah says we guided them because Ibrahim alayhi salam's effort and his sacrifice. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَذْكُرْ عِبَادَنَا إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبَ أُولِي الْأَيْدِي وَالْأَبْصَارِ O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Make mention of Ibrahim, Ishaq and Yaqub who were granted lots of power and they were granted lots of foresight. Allah says, Inna akhlasnahum. We chose them. We chose them. Inna Allah astafa Adam wa Nuhan wa ala Ibrahim wa ala Imran ala al-alameen. Allah has chosen Adam. And he chose Nuh and the progeny. And he chose the family of Abraham. And he chose the family of Imran. May peace be upon them all. Allah chose them over and above all of mankind. So it's Allah who chooses. فَقَدْ آتَيْنَا آلَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ وَآتَيْنَاهُمْ مُلْكًا عَظِيمًا The family of Abraham. We gave them all three things that you could ever be jealous about. What are the three things? We gave them Al-Kitab, which means we revealed books to them. We gave them revelation, we kept it in them. We gave them Hikmah, we gave them the wisdom, we gave them the path. Look at Ibrahim, how he spoke to the people, how he conveyed the message. Look at Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the family of Ibrahim, how he conveyed the message sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we gave them in the family of Abraham, mulkan azeeman. We gave them lots and lots of not only property, but even authority. Take a look at David and Solomon, Dawood and Sulaiman, may peace be upon them. They were prophets and they were kings at the same time. Subhanallah. They were from the family of Ibrahim, alayhi salatu wasalam. Then we have the death of Ibrahim, alayhi salatu wasalam. He passed away. And it is re report, reported and recorded that he passed away in an area in Palestine, which is today known as Al Khalil. It is known as Al Khalil, also known as Hebron. And where he passed away, he was buried, he was kafan enshrouded by his own children and buried there subhanallah till we meet again wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina muhammadin subhanallah wa bihamdih subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk